Okay, welcome to the Learn to Code podcast. In today's episode, I may like to talk about my plans for this year. Um, it's been a very difficult time for me um, because of my wife's pace, uh, passing. Um, and, uh, well, I'm still processing that one. It's been more than a month now. And, uh, well, life goes on, I guess. So um, I was thinking about um, uh, what to do for this year. It's been close to half a year already. So there is a lot of things that I had planned at the beginning of the year. But, uh, well, uh, I guess that plan needs to be cut short. So the new plan today is going to be, um, and I haven't thought about this too much, but uh, um, I took a week off from work and I managed to process a lot of things in my personal life. And I'm going to be talking about my learning objectives for the year 2022. And I was thinking about, you know what? It's been uh, two years since I've been working on anything related to Python. So I thought about uh, why not coming back to Python, you know? Uh, But instead of just focusing on Python as a tool to build an API and work with some data on the cloud and and call it a day, uh, what I was thinking about, well, what if I use Python for something else? What if I use Python for um, some more complex tasks to do? And after reading a little bit, uh, like a half an hour, about what Python can actually achieve besides APIs for the web or, or mobile applications, well, um, I was thinking about, well, why not? Uh, do some research and see what I can build with AI. Because uh, not just because um, AI is this um, trendy keyword, no? you know, um, and you, uh, well, I know it's a trendy keyword, and especially on LinkedIn, um, uh, a lot of people that uh, has something related to AI and Python on, on, on their CV, they are getting a lot of uh, job offers, but... Uh, um, that's a secondary, um, uh, a byproduct of learning AI. Well, I'm, um, my, <laughs> oh my God, uh, it's a little bit embarrassing, but my, my recent interest in AI is to, uh, basically reproduce human interaction, you know, um, most of my uh, interaction with other human beings is my basically my one friend, my wife, which is no longer alive among us, and uh, now that's gone, uh, and my family, my close family. That's uh, mom and pa- uh, mom and dad, and my sisters, and my cousins, and my nephews, and that's about it. So I was thinking about well. Uh, What if we can reproduce that level of um, intimacy uh, of interaction with other human beings, but with actual machines? Uh, And I recall a movie called uh, Her. I believe it was, uh, it debuted in 2013. And it's the history of a man who is processing a loss. Um, His wife didn't die. Uh, They break up. And they got a divorce. And um, basically, that's how the story begins. And he starts a relationship with another woman. But uh, the difference here is that this other woman is artificial in nature. Uh, It's an AI driven by an operated system. And and the users know her or know him because he can play both male or female. So basically, uh, this man downloads and installs a client on on his devices to interact with this AI, and the AI is so advanced that can basically reproduce uh, the level of interaction that you may have with another human being to the point that it actually passes successfully um, the, uh, how do you call it, the test... uh, The Turing test, basically, is a test where uh, you convince a human being 
that he is or she is actually interacting or talking to another human being, uh, although that supposed human being is actually a machine. So basically, if a machine can successfully um, uh, pass as a human being, then that that means the the the, the, the Turing test is passed. So. I was thinking about, well, I know next to nothing about AI, uh, but I've been working as a data engineer all my entire career or my job. I don't know if, if what I do is actually considered a career. I didn't finish uh, college. Uh, uh, not that in, it matters because in Mexico, college uh, for systems engineering is basically useless. Uh, but anyway, that's another subject. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, I I know next to nothing about AI, but I know enough to Google about it, and I found out that well, I I figured out that uh, the first step is to basically have uh, a, an understanding of Python programming language. A lot of resources and courses that I've been stumbled upon. Um, uh, are basically pointing at the same thing, uh, and which is the Python programming language. Um, I I worked with Python two years ago, uh, as I as I said, um, building APIs, you know, on receiving requests, delivering data to mobile apps and to websites, um, and that's about it. I was basically writing code for Amazon Web Services Lambdas. And I touched Python for that. Uh, I really didn't do anything else with Python. So I do have a lot to learn about Python. And especially now, because it's been two years since I uh, wrote something on Python. So I was thinking about uh, getting myself up again. Oh, uh, well, learning Python and my plan is basically uh, download a course or, or buy a course. And the one that I'm going to be working on, learning to code Python is this one. It's called the Complete Python Developer in 2022 Zero to Mastery, which uh, the name implies that this course is actually new. Uh, the reality is that most of these courses are being resold year after year, and they just update, um, they add some comments, they, they update some of the exercises, they add some videos, commentary videos mostly, and then they resell the same course over and over again. So I guess, I suspect that this course is one of those because... Uh, I bought this course like uh, three years ago, but I never get to to actually watch it. So it doesn't really make <laughs> much sense to me that the name uh, changes to Complete Python Developer in 2022 if I bought this course years ago. Uh, so it, it, it's not a bad practice, but I have to say it's disingenuous. Um, this course is being hosted on Udemy. And by no means, that means that uh, you don't have to buy this course. I actually recommend you to buy this course. Why? For the same reason the authors do this practice, basically. Because it really doesn't matter that you rename your course and you, uh, because you are going to figure it out that Python, or may I say, any programming language doesn't really change enough to make justi or, or to justify recording all over again all the videos about everything. Most of the time, uh, programming languages don't really change that much. Even on Python itself, the differences between Python 2 and Python 3 don't really uh, are, are not really compelling enough to justify creating courses just for Python 2 and just for Python 3. It, it doesn't really matter, really. So uh, what happens is that, you know what? People don't buy courses that uh, seems to be outdated. And that's another reality. As a client myself, as a student, 
um, I get really disappointed when I buy a course and I discover that the technology be being used inside the courses is actually outdated. Um, what happens sometimes is that, for example, if you are learning how to be a Linux, uh, a Linux um, system administrator, and the installation tutorial for the operating system doesn't fit with that, maybe because the installer changed between versions, and and the stuff and uh, and it's a small stuff like that that is going to cost you time. And if I, as a as a client, as a student, I am buying and getting my money into what I'm doing. If I'm buying a course, I'm expecting to basically guide me through the hoops. And basically, you know what? In order to get the result, you need to do this and this. And what happens is that, you know what? The Django uh, version changed from two to three. And now this thing that the video is showing you to do one way doesn't really work anymore because you need to do this little small, small change. But the thing is that since the video is telling me how to do it in the past, then I'm getting ready, I'm learning something in order to do, um, I'm, I'm learning, I'm preparing for a world that doesn't exist anymore. And that's an issue for education. Uh, that's a problem that education in general already has since the beginning of education itself. So how do we keep these courses uh, updated? Well, the more sensible thing will be to uh, kill the videos and the resources that are updated and re-record those ones, which in turn are going to create this domino effect that if, well, if I kill that one and that's the base for the next ones, I basically I basically have to re-record the entire course all over again. And that's what most people want to avoid because these courses, some of them don't really... Um, these courses are not like my YouTube channel, for example. I just hit record, I just pause the video from time to time and, and, and call it a day, basically. No edition because I haven't learned how to do that. And I understand that's really hard to do and takes time. So I decided to uh, use my lifetime to do other things like going out, uh, eating outside, visiting to restaurants, recording this podcast, recording this video, you know. So basically, um, that's the, the great issue I have with uh, some of the Udemy courses I have. Uh, I am afraid that this course is already um, outdated. But most of the time, the things that I don't really find fitting I can basically figure it out by myself, investing two, three, four, five, eight hours of a day. And that time builds up to something important. So uh, I don't know, I had mixed feelings about the, the entire subject. But the thing is, I'm going. my learning project for this year is going to be exclusively Python. It's not going to be Oracle PLSQL anymore. Uh, Oracle and basically every SQL programming scripting language all up there uh, is basically my comfort zone because I've been working as a database administrator, a database developer, an application developer for databases, uh, everything related to data, uh, data to data, everything related to data. I've been working on that since uh, the start of my career. And it's my comfort zone. Basically, everything I can consume about the subject, I do consume. I have courses about basic shit that I already know. And I keep watching them all over, like over and over again. I had courses on other subjects that I had never watched. But uh, everything related to databases, I probably watched it uh, once or twice. For example, this one here is called the Complete PLSQL Bootcamp. Beginner to advance PLSQL. I watched this course how many times? I don't know. The entire course I've been watching it several times a year. I think I already have like three times at least watched this this uh, 26 video time hour course. I've been watching this three times at least um, uh, in 2021 alone. 
So because it's my comfort zone, I see one video and I and I com I totally get it. I have no issues uh, doing the exercises. I I memorize things. Uh, it's my comfort zone. It's be, it's very comfortable for me um, delimiting myself to data and and SQL management at all times. So, and I don't want to be that man anymore. If uh, my wife's death um, is going to serve a purpose, uh, it's going to be that that. Um, if I stay in the same place, it's going to end up really bad for me because uh, uh, it's not going too well for me, as I, you can uh, see already. But the thing is, uh, my my objective for this year is going to be uh, learning Python. So the question is what the real plan is. Well, uh, let's just start by basically uh, learning the basics of python and this course is going to serve that purpose uh the complete python developer in 2022 zero to mastery uh that's going to be my main course for the short term um, i'm planning to use this weekend to basically uh get my uh, uh, beginning watch in this course at the same time i'm going to be coding the exercises I'm not going to be rushing this course because one, I'm not learning this course in order to get a job. That's the first thing. I already have a, a daytime job, a full-time job that sadly I cannot stream because you know why. Uh, I cannot share the code I build. I cannot uh, talk about it. I, I, I'm probably not even able to say what project I'm, am I working on or the name or anything about it. So I that's why I don't do it. But if I'm learning Python on my own, on my own time and building projects on my own time, uh, then I can talk about them and maybe I can uh, I, I can actually share the code publicly in, in, in GitLab or Bitbucket or GitHub or whatever other platform there is and basically share the code. Um, and that's something that I just can't do legally, you know, um, with my other projects. And I can feel very proud of my code on my work or maybe I feel shit about it and I'm not going to learn about it uh, because I cannot just share it, you know. So what I'm going to do is learn in Python uh, with a purpose, and that purpose is to build AI um, that I myself can interact with. Yeah, I know it sounds really sad, and just as the uh, as the movie uh, Her in 2013, Her, uh, it's a very depressing movie, really. Uh, but the idea intrigues me, and I wonder if I can actually build something like that. Maybe not at the level that uh, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, trick a human being into believing that the machine is actually developing feelings about him or her. Uh, but at least I want to try, and I want to see how... Uh, um what can i achieve by doing so and python is a really easy to learn programming language uh, that's one of the advantages um, it's really easy to get into it has a lot of tools that allow you not just to build apis that is uh, that's all i've been using python for uh, uh, in, in my entire career so uh, but they already know that you can identify things on pictures. You can do uh, machine learning with, with Python. You can do uh, website development. Um, you can statistical uh, data analysis. You can do a lot of things with Python. So um, in my case, I'm going to focus uh, in data science, machine learning, and artificial in intelligence. That's basically it. That's my my real target, uh, developing an AI that I can talk to and fill the void, you know, um, it, it sounds really sad, but uh, I am a very intelligent person, I think so, so, and I have a lot of time in my hands now, uh, that, I'm, that I am alone, so uh, I'm going to use it with a purpose. Uh, who knows, maybe I can find a new job that is going to pay me even more money and uh, to and work with python and machine learning and data analysis and artificial intelligence who knows uh i do remember in 2017 
I built this, uh, I cloned uh, a Git repo about, uh, and I adapted uh, a day trading bot for the Mexican market. And it actually works so well that with a, a, an investment of 9,000 Mexican pesos, <laughs> uh, that's basically nothing. It's like $500. Uh, I managed to get back like 22,000 after some years because uh, I forgot about the, the, the Python instance running over and over again. Uh, but it, uh, I, I recall uh, last year, I uh, received an, an invitation to something else about investments and uh, because the bot was basically uh, was still working and I forgot about it and suddenly I got an, um, a deposit on my bank account uh, from uh, my uh, from my broker and basically I got some earnings about around 2000. Uh, 22 or 25,000 pe Mexican pesos. That's basically a thousand dollars. But we are talking about, uh, I put $500 in 2017 and near the end of 2021, I got like uh, like uh, another $500. So uh, it didn't work really well, really, because with that money, I can make way more. <laughs> Uh, on my own but the interesting thing here is that the bot actually worked um it didn't um it didn't move the money too much that's another thing that i discovered so uh, but uh i i set up the bot to be a safe uh investor basically i uh, pr prioritize uh safety over uh probable profits so that's why uh, the bot didn't really invest too much on all that and all that time, but uh, the profits um, were really, really good. Um, I uh, I ended up killing the bot because uh, the Amazon Web Services bills are really high. So I killed the bot uh, and forgot about the subject entirely. I uh, uh, I didn't really wrote the code myself, but I was uh, capable of, of adapting adapting the bot to the uh, uh, to the Mexican um, how do you call it Bolsa Mexicana de Valores in English? I don't really know, uh, but I was able to make some money that way. Yeah, uh, it, it came to a moment that somebody changed the API and. Uh, and I needed to migrate my API, my API course to the new service uh, because I was basically working on the legacy system that is uh, that was going to be uh, um, removed this year, 2022 anyway. Uh, so that that's the thing. Uh, there are some projects that require your full time and investment on them in a in order to make them do something useful for yourself so uh, i decided at the time that well uh, it's very stressful because my tests are losing me money <laughs> it's very stressful no you know because uh you're losing 500 dollars um and not getting anything out of the experience other than programming experience so i can and i can get that or even more with that money on my pocket, you know. Uh, so that's why I killed the project. Basically, it requires way too much at of my attention in order to make it successful uh, in a meaningful way. Um, but anyway, oh my God, it's very hot here. But anyway, uh, um, okay, it's, it's close to 25 minutes already. I need to, uh, uh, to take a... To take a bath but anyway uh i'm going to be learning this this thing over here uh python uh and the interesting thing is going to be that i'm i'm planning to at least once a week to to make my podcast learning to code at least once a week and update you with the progress i'm getting 
Uh, I am also involving myself more with YouTube, and I'm going to be uploading videos of the podcast there on my YouTube channel. Links in the description of the podcast and the description of the video. I'm going to uh, put a link to the podcast episodes, you know. So I'm going to be learning Python uh, with the main objective of, well, maybe I guess I'm going to be touching data, uh, data science and mature learning along the way. But my real objective is going to be AI. And, and basically, I'm going to become this uh, software developer that is going to develop, um, you know, I, I'm going to develop basically a uh, waifu AI so lonely men like myself can interact. Uh, with that with that artificial uh, woman, I guess why not? Damn it! Uh, but I guess that's uh, my target in life right now to replicate artificial intelligence uh, for human beings to basically have company. Why not? Um, I feel the need to 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 have actual contact with another human being. Why not build it myself? That's what I say. Well. Uh, thank you for listening. If you're in, in, in read, in, in, indeed are, and see you, uh, hopefully next week. And I'm going to be, uh, creating a log, a video log, may I say, and I'm going to stream my experience. I wonder if, uh, am I getting into trouble if I'm, um, streaming, um, the videos themselves, at least in, in pieces, you know, uh, probably not. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can, uh, uh, what can I do about it? Because I don't want to get into legal trouble with anybody. Uh, not at this point, anyway. Um, I'm walking outside, making exercise. So it, it helps the heart somehow, I think. Exercise, you know, cardio. But anyway, uh, thank you for listening and see you later.